What is up, everybody? Welcome to the Ham Radio Crash Course. Welcome to Friday. Thanks for joining us, spending your time on a Friday coming out, seeing what we're up to. Today we've got a very special show. We've got the ARRLs, I can say that right, the ARRLs Becky Schoenfeld with us. And we're going to be talking about On The Air Magazine. So we're glad you can make it out. You can get ready with your questions in the chat, and we will take a little bit of Collins at the end. And a reminder, we will, we will be doing the Discord after chat. The link is in the description for that. So again, glad you can make it. And what's up, everybody? It's I, Josh, KI6NAZ. Thanks for coming out to the Ham Radio Crash Course. Again, the Ham Radio Crash Course is all about breeding inclusivity in amateur radio to give you some ideas, something to think about, then you take and apply on your own. So any questions you have, interesting things that you're involved in or want to mention it, post in the chat. Consider joining our Facebook group and our Discord because that's where we answer a lot of questions and have different things going on there as well. All right, who do we got in the chat? We've already got a lot of people coming in, so thanks so much for everybody hopping in. Hey, Mike, what's up, Mike? Uh, what else? Let's see. Hi from Wisconsin. <laughs> Josh, my wife says she's angry with you. I may have just made another order with Palomar. So, hey, thanks for the cue on that one. Palomar Engineers, not affiliated with me, but said they would do a coupon code if you use HRCC73 at checkout. And I'll make a quick note on this. I wanted to, to hit that message right up front. I don't have a lot of news to talk about, but I posted the uh, what is we are killing amateur radio and here's how you fix it. It was all about RFI, um, RFI in the shack. And um, everybody asked me about that dryer. And they're like, how do you have a dryer that runs off of 110? It's gas, guys. It's natural gas. So the heating element is gas. That's why the voltage is so low. And... That's what we use in California a lot because electricity is expensive. So what are we doing here today? Well, we can pretty much jump right into the interview pretty much. We are going to talk about the ARRL's new magazine um, on the air. And we have Becky with us to talk about that. And let me show you really quick. Becky was nice enough to provide the cover for the first, uh, first issue, which uh, we're pretty excited about. So I'll go ahead and bring Becky in now. And let's make sure you got your mic on there. Good. And Becky, how are you doing? Becky is W1BXY, by the way. Becky Schoenfeld from the AWR. How are you this evening? Good, Josh. How are you? Very good. Thank you. So tell us about yourself a little bit. You're the managing editor on QST and now the editorial director for On The Air, this new magazine that's coming out. Right. Um, I've been with ARRL since uh, the summer of 2011. Um, so it's been, been a while now. Um, I started out on books and after about a year I uh, was moved to QST. My background's in publishing um, a little bit of books, but mostly periodicals, mm -hmm. uh, newspapers, magazines. So it's been QST for a long time. And uh, now that we've got on the air, I am uh, in charge of, of scheduling all the editorial, planning the editorial for that. So. It's just more magazines at ARL now. Very good. Yeah, I imagine that's a fun time when you're about to kick off a new magazine, right? Oh, yes. It's been a lot of fun. It's been, uh, you know, it's, it's like having a whole different job all of a sudden. I bet. I a bet. Lot of new energy uh, popping out, which has been really refreshing. That's very good. Uh, real quick shout out to Glendon Blount. Thank you so much. Uh, big super chat. Thank you. I really appreciate it. So um, really quick question, Becky. Uh, how long has QST been out? I forgot to ask that um, earlier when we were talking. You've been making, I mean, it's been provided by the ADL law for a, quite a while, right? Um, QST turned 100 in 2000, uh, 2015. Wow, that's fantastic. Yeah. It's been published continuously since 1919. So uh, there was a little break for World War I, and then it, it came sure. back good in 1919. Oh, that's awesome. So, yeah, there aren't too many hundred-year-old magazines out there anymore. Uh, yeah, I don't think I wouldn't imagine so. Um, yeah, so tell us about the new magazine, kind of what it's about and what the the goal is, I guess. Um, the new magazine on the air. It's a bi-monthly, um, and it is geared toward beginner and intermediate level 
ham radio operators and radio communicators. Um, you don't have to be a technician to um, get on the air, to be interested in on the air. It just matters sort of what level you feel you're at. So any licensed class, been in the service, been in the hobby for any number of years, but you know, if, if your level of knowledge, if your level of comfort isn't quite there, On the Air is the magazine for you. Okay. So QST often, ha- like we talked about, has a lot of reviews and, and they go to some technical level. Where would you kind of put the technical level for On the Air? I guess it has a bit different viewpoint, right? Yeah. Um, on the Air is uh, beginner to intermediate. So we're... We're seeing a lot of opt-in from techs and generals, um, so we don't want to be completely rock bottom, but uh, we don't want to bore generals. We don't want to bore folks who um, have some operating background, who have played around on HF, who know how to get themselves out there, but we we want to be basic enough to bring along um, beginners, including rock bottom beginners. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of um, there are a lot of definitions. There's a lot of explaining concepts um, so that even if you've been out there operating, I mean, I've been out there operating, but I don't necessarily know uh, all the the electronic stuff, all the, the ham stuff that was on the test. Um, you know, you can get out there and operate without necessarily knowing some of that stuff, but we're going to take it down to that level for people so that they they do know uh, what's behind all of the stuff that they're doing. Yeah, one of the questions I think I get a lot of um, from the live streams and the videos is breaking down the jargon and all the acronyms. So I, it sounds like pretty much a, a little bit of that's going to be going on, which is going to be extremely helpful, I think, for people. Yeah, there's quite a bit of that going on. Um, there are a lot of definitions, a lot of spelling out those acronyms. Um, sometimes, and even in QST, there'll be um, what we call a ham speak box that pops up in the middle of an article sometime. Yeah. Um, on the air has those ham speak boxes, but even in the, the body of articles, there's just a lot of defining terms um, going into a little bit of an explanation, but not so much that we get bogged down in theory. Mm-hmm. We, you know, we want to get people to where they want to be so they can have fun with radio, so that they can be productive with radio without bogging down in a a bunch of equations, um, a bunch of the stuff that was on the test. Um, You know, folks want to to get active, whatever their definition of active is. And that's what we're aiming to do with On the Air. Oh, I love that. That's that's good you mention it. One of my big things is uh, just getting people out there, get them started. I mean, you know, you got to be safe. You got to follow the rules. Um, but I feel like that's not that's not a lot of effort to do things responsibly and safely and leg- and foremost legally um, by the FCC. So uh, that's great because I think that's what a lot of new hams need is the ability to kind of feel confident enough like they're not going to make a mistake. And if there's somebody out there kind of helping them out with that, that's going to be fantastic for that. So very good. So you covered a little bit about it, but who would you say the magazine is is for? Is there a target demographic that you're kind of looking for? There is. Um, and uh, it goes back to the tar- target demographic goes back to how On the Air got its start, um, which was back in 2017. Uh, a bunch of managers at ARLHQ got together and wanted to approach the the perennial problem of how do we bring more people into the amateur radio service, into the amateur radio hobby? How do we get um, them involved? Um, how do we get them to join ARL? And um, we looked at a lot of research that we had um, kicking around for a few years and and thought um, we looked at that picture that we had of people, and we thought, what else do we need to know? Mm-hmm. How do we get this information? So um, we figured out what we needed to know to get a clearer picture of, of who we needed to talk to, and um, put together uh, a survey. And 
rather than have folks just answer a bunch of demographic questions, we thought, let's give them something to react to. Um, they, they say that they want, we, know, we knew they wanted information. We knew that particularly beginners needed information that would help them become active ham radio operators. So um, we put together a package of information that was geared toward beginner intermediate and shaped it like a 32 page magazine, just for ease of use, just to give them something people could hold in their hands and react to and then answer some questions about it. And we called this test piece on the air. Oh. Uh, and uh, it went out to uh, a sample of, um, I think, uh, newer hams and folks who had uh, never been ARL members. And we said, you know, what do you think of this? What do you like about it? What do you not like about it? Is the level right? Are the topics the kinds of things you're interested in? Um, you know, if, if something like this existed, would you want to read it? Do you feel that this would be helpful? You know, tell us what you think. And uh, we also asked questions about um, license class, what kind of uh, technical level that these folks felt they were at, what they felt they could handle technically and where they needed help. We asked them questions about their hobbies apart from ham radio. And we asked them how they consume, how they like to consume information. And uh, so we got a whole bunch of data back, really interesting stuff. They really loved the test piece, and we, we more or less hit the nail on the head with that, which was encouraging. But then it was, how do we reach these people? Right. So um, that was 2017, and here we are, you know, at the, the end of 2019, uh, launching what became On The Air magazine. Um, I hear some people questioning why on earth did did they put out a new print magazine? Um, you know, isn't that dead trees? Yeah, let's let's cut down more trees. You know, let's cut down more trees. Why did ARL <laughs> put out a dead tree magazine? Well, because that's overwhelmingly what people told us they wanted. Okay. Print is not print really isn't dead. Um, our ARLs audience overwhelmingly wants print. It's mm -hmm. just astonishing. Survey after survey, survey after survey that we do, they tell us they want print. So um, here is, the, you know, on the air magazine. It's a real thing now. It's based in the research uh, that we did in 2017. And uh, sort of the, the whole thing behind it is, you know, we asked what you wanted, you told us what you wanted, and now here it is. Now, um, you know, we've, we've taken the time to tailor it to what you told us you wanted, and we're giving it to you. So I didn't know about the pedigree that you had this study. That, that was new information to me. Um, so I love analytics. Uh, was there like a key, like maybe just one, your favorite or, or the most impactful, like lesson learned from that survey that you remember? Is there anything that jumped out at you like, wow, OK, we, we could work with this or, or something you, you didn't expect? There there was something that we had an inkling of that the survey results confirmed. And it ties into something that you and I were talking about earlier before we we got started up tonight. Um, we had an inkling that folks who are coming into the hobby now are not coming in to get DXCC, to run in contests. Um, yeah. You know, they're, they're not doing these classic, uh, we like to call them classic ham pursuits. Um, and we had an idea of that. The survey results absolutely confirmed that. Um, we found with the survey results that hams that are coming into the hobby nowadays, by and large, um, they want to do um, public service and emergency communications. And they're interested in the technology as a means to all sorts of ends. Um, you know, uh, like what you were saying before about... Um, like the balloon, right? Like, you know, you yeah. have call, I'll have college students that'll contact me and say, hey, we've, we've made this weather balloon and we want to track it. And I'm like, okay. 
and I'm like, oh, we, we found out about this thing, APRS, are you familiar with it? And then that ends up getting a couple of them licensed, right? Yeah. And I've heard that from multiple college students, actually, is that they end up picking up ham radio to solve a logistical problem with a, with yeah. a project they're working on. Like uh, Sterling, uh, Sterling Mann uh, on YouTube here, he got his license or someone in his club got his license because they had a solar powered car that they needed to keep track of. And they used ham radio because it was much better than FRS walkie talkies. And that's why they got it. Yep. That is uh, absolutely in line with the kinds of things we heard on this survey. And uh, we, you know, we looked at each other and went, oh my gosh, you know, <laughs> we're right. That's, that's what they want. Um, and uh Eventually, we'll get into that kind of stuff in On the Air, um, the technology for the technology's sake. Um, a lot of it is stuff that you don't even necessarily need a license for. A lot of it is stuff that's just receding. Um, and it's, it's really fascinating to see that, that this is how people are using um, RF technology nowadays. I, I realize Sterling Mann is actually in the chat. Sterling, was that correct? Did I, did I uh, say that story correctly? Was it somebody else? Oh, it was Kyle's story. Uh, okay, sorry. Sorry, I confused you two. I apologize. <laughs> so you kind of already tipped uh, on it a little bit. With your AWRL membership, you get one printed magazine of, of your choice, right? But you get access to more of them electronically. Can you kind of describe? You kind of already talked about it, but maybe just hit it. Yeah. Um, on the air is ARRL's newest member benefit. Um, QST is an ARL member benefit, and it, it was uh, the flagship magazine. It still is the flagship yeah. magazine. It's the membership journal of ARL. Um, and what we're offering now is, um, if you're an ARL member, you have a choice of one magazine in print. You can choose to receive QST in print or on the air in print. But regardless of which one you choose, all members can access both of those magazines digitally. That's fantastic. Uh, the digital edition of the first issue of On the Air goes live, I believe, on Tuesday, the 14th. So all ARL members, regardless of which print magazine you've opted into, will be able to uh, see both QST and on the air digitally. Um, I think digital QST is out already. I think it, it came out today. Um, but on the air will be up there on Tuesday. Oh, very um, good. We are also, um, I think within the next, I can't remember if it's the next two months mm -hmm. or so, um, NC <laughs> you National Congress Journal uh -huh. and QEX. Um, those two publications will be available digitally to all members uh, very shortly. I forget what the actual date is. So um, there's there's just going to be you know this plethora of magazines. You're you're going from access to one magazine to access to four magazines very shortly. So um, members have that to look forward to within the next few months. That's great. Uh, I've been a long time. Well, I also like print magazines. I have a stack of QSTs I hang on to for the articles, but I've been a long time user of the digital platform, too. I remember when Ada Laurel first moved to that, I was like one of the first ones out of the gate on my iPad, like iPad one or two or something like that when it first came out. So, yeah, I, I definitely like that. So I like the fact that you can get one physical, but physical copy, but then have access to the uh, digital copies. Or I thought that was really really awesome so i'm getting emails um gosh almost every day i get several emails asking why can't i have both qst and on the air in print mm -hmm. i both in print um why can't i have it and the answer to that is you got to wait a few months um later this year there's some infrastructure that we're working on and once it is in place, uh, members will be able to get both QST and on the air in print. So all of you who have been emailing me and who have been emailing customer service, hang in there. That option is coming. Hmm. Okay. And I think someone earlier in the chat asked if HRO is going to sell the magazine, which they're already selling QST. So I assumed they probably would too, right? Um, That's an odd okay. question to throw at you, but somebody in the chat said it. So I thought I'd, I'd give it to you. Yeah. Um, I, I'm not sure I think so. 
but I've had so much on the air stuff floating around in my head. Uh, I can't remember off the top of my head. Sure. Makes sense. Yeah. Um, so you, you talked a little bit about, you know, the, the survey that kind of got you to the point of, of kick, kicking off the magazine. And now that you have it going forward or you have it coming out, looking forward, how do you feel that it's going to relate to the kind of the future of ham radio? That's a pretty heady question. I get that. So uh, feel free to take that, take that however you will, and we can work with it. <laughs> the future of ham radio. Or where um, do you see it going, I guess, the future of ham radio? You kind of mentioned a little bit, but I don't know if there's something else you've got or, or maybe a vision for where the magazine's heading. Um, there's, uh, I think where we're heading, uh, as far as offerings from ARL is more specialization. Mm -hmm. Um, QST is the membership journal and it's become kind of a catch all for everything. It's, it's kind of had to be all things to all people. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and I think that's, uh, a thing that some people love about it and that some people hate about it. Um, and going forward, the, the general plan is to have more specialization in the publications there, you know, amateur radio has so many different aspects to it. It's just this, you know, microcosm of complexity, um, on the air, you know, is covering a lot of the different topics, but we are talking about breaking out, um, things like public service, um, contesting. Of course, we do have NCJ. It may be that NCJ gets an overhaul, um, whether it's editorially, whether it's graphically. Um, QEX, you know, it, it has been billed as the magazine for experimenters. Um, so that's sort of our technology magazine. Uh, we're looking at segmenting that stuff so that more of these special interest areas in ham- amateur radio have their own publication so okay. that if you're um if you're interested in contesting you know it's it's maybe a more beefed up version of of what currently exists as ncj okay uh, yeah so i guess yeah that so it's you said specialize it's specializing a little bit more focusing in that kind of niche area and then you have qst which is kind of like the the centerpiece, if you will, um, or the, you know, um, what was the term you used uh, for the main magazine, the the front leader or the, it's, you used a term, uh, I think. the flagship. That's it. That's a better term. Uh, so that's the <laughs> flagship. And then you're going to have something that's a bit aimed more towards the introductory slash intermediate side. So I like that. Okay. Um, so then I, I think you've already covered a little bit of this too, but the lineup for magazines going forward is kind of everything's the same, um, aside from the changes you've mentioned with the addition of now on the air. Yeah. Um, we'll be, um, bringing NCJ and, and QEX to, uh, what we hope will be a larger audience by making them available digitally to all members. And, um, we're going to sort of let that ride for a little while and, and see where it takes those publications. Um, you know, because, uh, we don't want to sort of say, you know, if we build it, they'll come. We want to know right. uh, what those communities want once, once more of them, more, um, NCJ type folks and QEX type folks really get a look at those publications. Um, we're hoping we're going to start to hear about what those folks want so that we can, uh, if we're going to make changes, then we can make changes that are appropriate to what the community wants. Okay. Very good. Um, so the, you, you were talking about the survey and that kind of gave you the basis of going forward with the magazine. And I'm curious, how does it kind of line up with, the way AWRLC's kind of amateur radio demographics uh, these days, as far as, you know, different people getting licensed, uh, are there any trends that are kind of emerging? I, I, we, like, we, we, like you said, we talked a little bit before the video here. Um, so I'm assuming that some of this is coming out because there's probably some thought, of course, that went into this by the AWRL as far as emerging trends in demographics and amateur radio. And, and what have you noticed or what have you seen? Well, 
the main trend uh, that I think we're all noticing is uh, the aging population of hams sure. and the, this enormous concern of uh, how do we replace those guys um, and gals? You know, they're, they're mostly guys. So I say they're, they're the guys. Um, well, that's backed up by fact. We know that, right? <laughs> we, we have all the analytics on this. Yes. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, how, how are we going to keep the hobby going? How are we going to keep the service going? Um, where are these people going to come from? And amateur radio is such a niche hobby. It, it really isn't for everybody, you know, <laughs> and I, I think that people tend to qualify themselves once they're exposed to certain things. Like you mentioned with a, a college student that's, you know, trying to get a project going and they, they discover APRS or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that that's one of the ways that we find that hams sort of, people people who are going to become hams sort of qualify themselves um, on their way to perhaps getting licensed. Um, where was I going with this? Oh, replacing uh, the, the current generation of, of classic hams. Um, and I guess we're not replacing them. It's just a matter of fact of how things work. Of right? the way life goes, naturally. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, because they're they're in the hobby. You know, um, all all any of us do is is get older. You know, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. We we don't want that privilege to be denied us. So uh, you know, as hams get older, um, we're we're hearing about hams that are going. You know, I. I want to kind of slow down. Um, I'm not as active as I used to be. I'm going to take down my towers. Yeah. Um, you know, we, we hear about that stuff. And um, folks who are coming in, uh, we're hearing a lot about, you know, wanting to use the technology in and of itself. Um, we're hearing about folks who are getting involved because they want to do MCOM public service. We're hearing a lot about folks who got licensed because um, a friend or loved one really, really, really encouraged them. Um, you know, what do we give these people to do? Right. Uh, if have we got them or have we only sort of got them? And if we've only sort of got them, how do we really get them? And uh, what we're hearing is that they don't have the help that this classic generation of hams had because what did those guys have? They had Elmers. Um, yep. Yeah. And everyone's going, well, where are the Elmers? Yes. Yes. They're, by and large, they're not there anymore. Mm -hmm. And they're not there anymore because life changed. The world changed. Society changed. Um, Kids aren't running around on the streets until their moms call them in for dinner anymore. Right. Kids' childhood is not like that anymore. Right. Um, you know, the if is there a nice older man down the street? Is he really going to call you in and say you want to come look at this cool thing that's that I have in my basement or my garage? Um, life's not really like that anymore. You know, yep. right, wrong, or indifferent. That's just not the way it goes. Yeah. So the Elmer system isn't there anymore. Where are these people supposed to go for help? Yeah. Um, you and I were talking a little bit earlier about um, ham radio being very decentralized. Ham radio is a community, and hams are out there everywhere, but not necessarily congregating in places where they're readily available to people who might be interested. Um, yeah, there's, you, there's uh, kind of a move to almost decentralized clubs now. I mean, it's that seems to be happening as well. I mean, I'm not trying to interrupt you. Keep going with where you're going. But I've, I've noticed that trend as well is happening, which I, yep. I find is kind of just all saying the same thing. Yeah, there's um, that movement toward online clubs. Um, and, and that's kind of a moving target, too. You know, every time I, I think about trying to do an article about that to, to sort of help other perhaps like-minded people, like-minded groups along, it's just it's really – um, hard to, to sort of pin that down. So if anybody out there has an online club that's doing really great things, 
shoot me an email. Oh, I've got one we can talk about <laughs> right at the end here. I'm a oh, member of it. Okay. <laughs> um, but so all of that is changing. And the, the systems that used to help interested people and newer hams get really solid in the skills and the knowledge that they needed to be successful in amateur radio um, have, have kind of faded away. Yeah. Um, so that's where we see things. That's where things are. And, and if, and we realized that the ARL was in a unique position to step in and help those people because ham radio is so decentralized because it's a community that's just everywhere. Mm -hmm. Well, ARL is a community that, that is centralized and we're there to, to help and to promote. So we were uniquely positioned to, to offer some help. Um, and one of the ways we're getting started doing that is with on the air. Um, we have another initiative that is an uh, online learning. Uh, it'll be a series of online courses. I think it's called the ARL Learning Center. Um, that's going to be rolled out later this year. Oh, so there's um, yeah, there there's all kinds of stuff cooking at ARL headquarters. So what what is that exactly? Is there a little bit you could say about that without giving away too much? That's going to be a, a series of online courses. It's not necessarily all for beginners because learning never ends. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll, we'll be kicking that off with stuff that is for beginners, but as that online learning program develops, there'll be um, interesting niche stuff for more experienced hams as well. Okay. So um, we're hoping to offer resources um, courses, sort of places where newer hams can go to get this information, get this knowledge, um, find ways to build skills that used to be handled by. Yeah. The was that, was that kind of always the design of, of this to kind of be like an Elmer in your pocket kind of thing? Cause I mean, if you think about it, it's a digital app, right? Or a digital document. <laughs> it's an Elmer in your pocket. That's a free ad copy, by the way. You have a picture yeah. of somebody pulling the phone out of the pocket. It's got the magazine already on it right there. That's free. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Josh. So, we've, we've talked about all kinds of stuff. I bet, in yeah. The last couple of years, like, you know, could there be live chat help? You know, could there be, um, you know, all just all kinds of stuff like that. And, you know, maybe that's out there in the future. We don't know. But where we're starting with this, you know, we, we have made a start. On the Air magazine is, yeah. is the very beginning of this stuff. And this um, suite of online courses is going to be a big next step in that. Mm -hmm. And who knows where it'll go from there. You know, this is only the beginning. So um, so this is, this is what we're doing to try and step in and, and fill that void um, of... of sort of the the waning of elmer culture mm -hmm. um yeah i like the concept now i get where you're going with that I, I didn't initially put the the thought together but then when you mentioned elmering that is a totally true problem that we have out there so yeah that's a, a really good idea in that regard so i don't want to steal anything from the future content of the magazine and i know you're probably thinking like chess you've got to think how many issues ahead of of uh, the one you're currently working on but is, uh, is there going to be uh, possibly some articles on, like, some radio activation stories, stories of, of in the field, talking about somebody's kit and what they used to get out in the field and kind of breaking it down a little bit and how they were successful or whatnot? Yeah, that's a big part of um, what we present in QST, and we will certainly be doing that in On the Air. We'll be, be presenting it differently in On the Air because we need to really break it down for folks who are, are trying to learn, you know, how can I be successful at this? Mm -hmm. um, we've got, um, I, just, uh, I just accepted a really great article about um, getting started in SOTA yeah. that uh, I worked on with um, David Wise, whose call sign I can't remember right now. He, he just got a... Um, he just got a one by two call, or maybe it's a two by one call. I don't remember how that shook out. Oh, very nice. But, uh, I don't have that slotted into an issue yet, but it's a it's a really nice beginner level article about how he became aware of the soda program, how he chose his first peak, 
um, what he learned about the kind of equipment that he brought. Um, he he was taking too much equipment with him. <laughs> um, you know that that process. So that's that's the sort of level. Um, it was at just the right level for for on the air, and uh, we just got that hashed out. So I don't know when readers will be seeing that, but it, it'll be in there eventually. Oh, that's um, great. Yeah, we're we're kind of excited about portable. I'm I like portable a lot. Um, so uh, you know, we we do hit portable. I don't know if it's more than we should, but we do hit portable a lot. <laughs> it, it's extremely popular right now. Um, well, first, let me say my, my first soda activation was a fail. Um, I packed too much. Um, I way under predicted what I needed and total fail. <laughs> but it got a lot better from that point. So uh, I definitely hear you on that one. Um, the portable stuff, though, is so amazing now because you've got the shrinking of radios, uh, the easy to connect to digital modes that are available now and getting outdoors for a lot of people is the best way to get away from all the rfi in the house mm -hmm. and and that's a nightmare that's um that pops up in quite a few of the the portable stories that we do and it, it pops up in david wise's story too um, it was a big factor in why he started doing portable activations just to to um he, he was in a, an HOA situation, and Portable offers you a really great way to get out there and, and use the antennas that you want or need to use because you're outdoors and, and you don't have to bow to your HOA. Yeah. You get a little bit more space to spread out with antennas, and you do you do draw on a lot of uh, people that are wandering around going, what is this guy doing? I had the cops called on me once before uh, when I operated from a park. Because I had a funky octopus antenna, and uh, they they were like, "This guy is up to no good. This ham nerd." <laughs> yeah, but you know, getting stopped. You know, we we all know that's a good time to do some outreach too. And... Yeah, yeah. We had yeah. a card um, printed, and when I did soda with uh, Jerry KG Six HQD, we were working. Someone would work the radio, and the other person would be talking to the people as they walked by because it was a lot. So definitely time for outreach on that one. Yeah, tag team outreach. Yeah. Oh, so we got a question. Lee Harrell, thanks for the super chat. I appreciate it. Uh, if we're currently receiving QST and would like to switch to on the air, is that possible? If so, how do we make that move? Thanks and happy new year. Um, hello. Uh, thanks for the question. Uh, if, uh, if you really want to switch midstream, uh, you can contact our customer service department and they can help you out. Um, generally we're, we're saying when you renew, you know, that's, that's the time to switch. But, uh, if you really want to switch before your renewal time, I, I think we can help you out. Okay. All right. Very good. Um, I'm going to turn on the call-ins. We're about that time. I think we can start taking call-ins. And um, while I'm getting this going, we, we, uh, we, again, we talked beforehand and we probably should have canned most of all this discussion, but let's try to revive some of it. Um, I was asking about the podcasts. I'm a big uh, listener of podcasts. I'm, I commute two hours a day in the car, so I listen to a lot of podcasts. And I always listen to The Doctor's In and um, So Now What? So what's the podcast lineup going to be going forward? Or, or what's going on with that, if you can talk about it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can talk about that. Um, the podcast lineup is currently transitioning to uh, a couple of new things. Um we have had uh, the Doctor Is In podcast for quite some time. It's a companion to the very popular Doctor Is In column that appears in QST. Um, the Doctor is, of course, Joel Hallis. Um, and uh, we are, so the, the Doctor Is In kind of resides as the more um, experienced ham podcast yep. uh, a more you know more knowledgeable more confident maybe been in the hobby longer maybe has more of of a, a technology background so that's leveled for those folks and part of the thinking behind that was um doctors in has been around for i think it was four years which is a, a long time for a podcast mm -hmm. and um 
you know, it's been very popular. It's had a wonderful run. We love Joel. We're, we're so thankful uh, to have him doing stuff for us, doing the column and podcast for us, um, even long after he has retired. Um, but rather than uh, sort of, you know, sort of run it out to, you know, like let, how long can we have this thing go? Let's kind of freshen things. Let's kind of switch things up. And let's try and convert the value that the the Doctor Is In podcast had um, to to something new, something a little fresher, and maybe bring that audience along. Mm -hmm. So, um, what we are going to be offering for the the sort of QST crowd is a new podcast called Eclectic Tech that oh. I believe debuts in February. And that's going to be hosted by Steve Ford, the editor of QST, um, WB8IMY. And he's uh, also the voice of the other pod, the news, or he's a part of another podcast too, isn't he? Yeah, he is. He's been part of the Doctor Is In with Joel Hallis. That's it. Okay. And I believe he's currently the voice of uh, ARL News. I think he's. No, actually, the voice of ARL News, I think, is Carlo Carrera. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, I yeah. Get that. yeah. Um, but uh, but Steve has been on Doctor with Joel. Mm -hmm. um, so Steve will be doing this new podcast, Eclectic Tech. Um, it's going to be sort of a podcast companion to his eclectic technology column that appears in every issue of QST. And it's a neat little column. It, it only runs one page every month, but it presents things that are... Um, maybe more closely related to ham radio some months, maybe some months more tangentially related, oh, okay. but it's all something really interesting, um, unusual. Um, and it, it's a nice way to mix things up. Um, it's sort of, uh, sometimes it's curiosities. Like I remember he did a column about, uh, Bluetooth and and why Bluetooth is called Bluetooth, and uh, that wasn't as technological um, as some of his uh, most of the other columns. It was more eclectic than technological, but uh, there is some really interesting technology that he highlights in that column. And going forward, um, that's what the podcast will be as well. Okay. Yeah. So we're we're going to sort of try and port the. Doctor is in listenership over to this new eclectic tech podcast. Okay. Um, so now what had been uh, sort of cast toward beginner level, and that was before we had on the air. That was before we knew on the air was really going to be an actual magazine. It was still kind of in the development is going, are we going to do this? Are we not? Is this the right time? Is it focused properly? And now that On the Air exists, we're looking to create uh, a real strong suite of offerings for that audience. Um, folks who are either newcomers, fairly recent licensees, folks who have been licensed, you know, two years, three years, if folks have been licensed longer, they're maybe not that strong in the tech. Maybe they haven't been operating. Maybe they haven't been using the technology that much. We really want to bring these people along step by step, really give them a, a strong basis in everything from the jargon to basic electronics, you know, really ground up. And we felt the best way to do that was to have a companion podcast to On the Air. We looked oh. at, you know, are we going to repurpose So Now What to have So Now What be sort of On the Air's companion podcast? Right. There were a lot of discussions about it. Sure. Um, so ultimately, we decided that On the Air would have its own dedicated podcast. And oh, okay. Yeah, there'll be a podcast. Um, the On the Air podcast debuts on Thursday. Um, I just finished writing the script this afternoon. <laughs> oh, all right. All right. Yeah. Um, and that'll be monthly. The On the Air magazine is bi-monthly. The podcast will be monthly. 
Um, so what we'll do in the first episode is we'll give you sort of a, a walkthrough of the issue. We'll go through sort of flipping through page by page and um, talk about why, why the things that are in there are in there mm -hmm. and what we hope to give newcomers with this kind of material. And uh, in the February running of that podcast, we'll get into extending the material that appears in that issue. Okay. So in the issue, um, we'll show up in the podcast. There'll also be an on-the-air blog. Um, oh, that I, okay. I think that debuts um, not this coming week, the week after. I think it debuts the week of the 20th. So all these things, the On the Air magazine, podcast, and blog, are all going to support each other. They're all going to kind of talk to each other. Um, so if you're not a podcast person, then something might show up in the blog that's also on the podcast, or vice versa. Um, there'll be an On the Air Facebook page. So if you're oh, a Facebook person, if you're a Facebook person but not a podcast person, yep. there might be enough overlap there that you're going to get the extra goodies that are in the podcast or the blog, it's all going to sort of so talk to it, It's a target rich environment as we call it. Right. So if you can port that content into the, the medium form podcast, blog magazine, you're kind of hitting all your bases. It can't just be a carbon copy of course. And I'm sure you, you know that. Um, so that sounds awesome. Uh, we got a caller, so I'll, I'll go ahead and patch them in. Uh, hey caller, what's your name? Hey, Becky, uh, this is Bill, November 6th, Foxtrot, Foxtrot, Charlie. I just turned on the uh, the iPad and saw you, and uh, I'm really looking forward to the new magazine. Uh, when's the first issue uh, going to hit, uh, hit the sands? Hi, Bill. Um, thanks a lot for the call. The first issue of On the Air is officially in the mail. Um, have you? Did you opt into it? Or are you still receiving QST in print? No, I'm getting QST, but I'll, I'll probably opt into it because I, I watch, I see QST uh, online. Mm -hmm. uh, is On the Air going to be online as well? Yes. So even if you're opted into QST in print, you'll still be able to view On the Air in the digital edition online. And that's going to debut on Tuesday, the 14th. Beautiful. Boy, I'm really looking forward to it. So, uh, yeah, I've been a life member of the league for about 25 years oh, and great. just great. Uh, getting more involved. So, uh, okay, well, I'll let you go to, to other college, but I saw you, and at first I, I didn't know if you were live or not, and then uh, I figured, well, heck, I'll call and see, and so there you are. All right, So thanks. have a great weekend, and thanks for everything you do. You too, thanks. Bill. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. All right, yeah, the phone lines are open. Um we are having a good conversation though, so I don't. I'm not surprised that people aren't calling in. Usually, there's a lull in the traffic, and they're like, "Okay, I'm going to jump in and ask a question." But you're. Uh, this is really good information. So, okay, <clears throat> very good. Um, let's. I think we we hit all my questions that I had, and we definitely went a little bit further into that as well. So, um, I. I'm glad that you got to, to talk about some of this stuff and, and I get to hear where you're going with it because that's not necessarily what I expected. I, I kind of thought, you know, uh, so now what, you know, had a, a pretty straightforward topic every show. And I, I thought maybe the magazine would be kind of like that. But if it's the helping out people with the jargon and, and walking them through the acronyms and, and kind of being that Elmer um, to explaining – why you do something it doesn't have to always be the most technical thing to still be safe and adhering to the laws and still being able to have fun which uh, i hope that's the primary goal right guys why are we doing this is because it's supposed to be fun it's supposed to be you know a, a hobby something we enjoy doing um so that that all together sounds like a, a pretty good deal so I'm, I'm pretty excited about that i'll definitely be pulling it up on my ipad um, when it show, and you said the 14th, right? Was the, uh, yep. It's the supposed to be Tuesday the 14th. Very good. All right. We got another caller. Caller, go ahead. What's your name? Charlie. Hi, Charlie. What's up? Well, newly licensed ham. What I'd like to know is 
what, what, why should I join AARL or ARRL, whatever? What's a good reason to do so? A good reason to do so is the fact that uh, this year we're rolling out a bunch of stuff that's that's just for the new folks, um, specifically for new folks. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been a long time since we we've tried stuff for newer hams before. Um, this this time it's backed by a ton of research. It's sort of a situation where you told us what you wanted and and we listened. This is tailored for you. And we're backing it up in ways that uh, I don't think we've ever backed it up before. Mm -hmm. So and it's it's sort of multi pronged. It's popping out in a few different places. It's not just a magazine. Mm -hmm. A bunch of other formats that if for some reason you don't like print, if some reason you don't like a podcast, it's it's over here in a blog, it's over here on a Facebook page. Um, there are going to be courses, there's going to be stuff broken down into smaller and smaller little um, specific, interest specific ways that so that if something over here doesn't speak to you, we've got something else that might um, we're kind of attacking it from a few different ways now. Uh, and these are things we haven't tried before. So it's up to you guys to tell us whether we got it right. And because all this stuff is member benefits, if you don't join, you won't be able to see it. So you won't be able to tell us whether we got it right. <laughs> <laughs> I can add a couple of things to that. You've got uh, the VEC, VE coordination that the AWRL does, which is a, you know, that's how we get more people involved. They are the testing arm. There are other VECs out there, but the AWRL is the largest. Um, you've got the Bureau, which, you know, for a lot of people that exchange QSL cards, that's huge. You don't, I don't believe you have to be an AWRL member to use Logbook of the World, but you're supporting it by your dues. And so Logbook of the World is kind of the premier location for putting your logs online and definitely going after the awards, which I still do. I still like all that stuff. <laughs> so, uh, Charlie, did that help answer the question at all? To some degree, thank you. All right, Charlie. Thanks for calling in. Thanks, Charlie. All right. We got uh, another caller. Oh. Uh, let's see. Caller, go ahead. What's your name? Hi, JP Matthew KG1 YSN. I'm a dog. I've been in the for two years. My question is, has the ARRF thought about like, the non-traditional fields that have some type of disability than I do? Um, so I think that's Matthew. Hey, Matthew. Uh, he's a member of our Discord and comes out on, uh, on the videos a lot. So... I think the question is as far as ARRL looking towards people with disabilities or, or covering that in some way. I, I don't know if that's come up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, in terms yeah. of, of covering it, uh, we or, have. I guess passed. support of could be, yeah. Um, you know, we're always looking for, uh, you know, leads toward other people that uh, are in the hobby who are differently abled. So, you know, uh, you can contact me and we can talk. Um, there are, it's been a while since we did anything. And I know, I know you've got the, uh, Matthew, I know we talked about handy hams and yep. I think I, if you go to the discord, Matthew, I sent you a contact for somebody that said that they could come out and help you, um, set up your antenna. I don't know if you saw that. I tried to email you and send you a discord. Yeah, I, yeah, I think I do remember I was talking about that. I don't, I don't think I actually talk 
Cuban. Uh, it's, um, yeah, I do have the ear of the name, but I, I never... I think you're so, we're fighting your cell phone now. <laughs> I think you're kind of getting it out. It's hard for me to copy the... Are you still there? Yeah, I oh. must... I think they have before. I, I, well, I'm sure, Becky, you can you can mention it if you can think of one off the top of your head. But uh, there are organizations that are specifically for that. Like, I know you yeah. know Handy Hands, but go yeah. ahead, Becky. But, um, Matthew, if you have any ideas in particular, um, we would be interested to hear about that. You can, uh, an easy email address to remember is qst at org. And if you have ideas, uh, you know, you can send them in via that email address and uh, we can take a look at them. Yeah, I just I thought I was having to go there. Yeah. No, I, I think we got the question. I, I think um, if you have an idea, though, make sure to reach out to Becky for that. So, all right, Matt, um, we're going to still do the Discord after chat. So if you want to jump over there, too, we, we can talk over there as well, because we're going to wrap up here shortly. So thank you for calling in, Matthew. Thanks, Matthew. Okay, I think we've got one more, and then we'll we'll go ahead and do the, the wrap up. Oops. Hold on. There we go. Uh, caller, go ahead. What's your name? Hello? Are you there? Yes. Are you hearing me? Yes. What's your name? Okay. How are you, George? Uh, how, Becky? How are you? My name is Matt from Argentina. Uh, first of all, I want to say thank you. Josh, for all our, that are you doing in the in the channel, um, it's very nice, and I am really happy that the ARL right now is doing that this approach. I think you are uh, Becky, you are listening the hands right now. What they need, I, I I think that it's a very nice approach to take care of the newbies of the new hands, like the YouTubers do for. Of course, so uh, it's very important to to for, for, for me that you take care of that because that is uh, I I always say that the YouTubers are very important to they are growing they are they are helping us to grow the hobby you know sorry about my English guys okay I, no you I, sound I, great I'm a little bit nervous right now okay but uh, I think Betty is a very nice approach that you are launching this new edition okay. And, uh, and I had to say something. I, for example, you have to give to the YouTubers some ads for free for, 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 all, for all what they are doing right now for the hobby, you know? I think it's very important because you are doing this kind of approach and all the YouTubers, Josh, Jason, uh, um, also, KH, MRD, Mike, everyone are doing a very good job, and it's very important to the hobby. So, please, I will really need to see a free ad for these YouTubers. <laughs> all right? Well, checks in the mail, Matt. I really appreciate. It. Uh, thank you for for calling in on that one. I mean, Becky making herself available to be on the show is, I mean, already really huge. That that's an awesome thing that we're doing this to begin with. So, thank you, Becky, for that. And thank you, Matt, for, for mentioning that. But 
<laughs> okay, that is, that is it, guys. Thank you very much. I'm very nice approach, Becky. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks, Matt. Very good. Bye, guys. All right. Well, uh, Becky, thank you so much for coming on. Is there anything you want to mention that we might not have uh, hit that you want to talk about before we go wrap it up? Um, boy, not that I can think of. It's, you know, it's just about 11 o'clock here on the East Coast. I can feel my eyes starting to droop. <laughs> this has been really great. Thanks a lot, Josh. And uh, it's an exciting time at ARL, we're really excited about offering this stuff to the community and uh, we're very interested to hear what you all have to say about it once you get your hands or at the very least your eyes on on the air. Um, you know, this, this publication is for uh, the community, you know, and uh, we, we wanna know if we got it right. We wanna know if you're, you're actually using this and if this is something that's gonna help you. Oh, I'm excited to check it out. Uh, ben Robinson, uh, good luck in your Aries statewide simplex contest tomorrow. That's awesome. And 86 DM Dennis. Thank you, buddy. I appreciate that. Um, okay, Becky, hang on the, the line here for a second. I got to close out with my Patreon close out to thank everybody. But again, amazing, awesome that you could join us. And thank you for staying up. I, I really do appreciate it. But uh, this has been hopefully really helpful. And don't worry, I'll email you right after I read uh, the magazine after the 14th when I see it. And I'll tell you every one of my thoughts. So, <laughs> so thank you again. All right, let's uh, give a... Oh, sorry. Well, <laughs> I thought you might have muted. What was that? Oh, I just said thanks for having me on. <laughs> okay. Thanks again. All right. Uh, so want to give my big thanks to... Let's flip it over here. Thank you to all the patrons. You guys um, largely help create the content by allowing access to not just the radios and all the equipment, but some of the equipment that I use to make this show. By the way, there will be a post coming up soon. Um, I'm going to have a contest uh, for the patrons, so that will be um, going along shortly here. So anyway, big thank you to Carrie Blackwell, Jason Brown, Jason Siebert, David Dancero, Danny Miller, uh, Wesley Magyar, Barbara Schrock, Will Ladd, Evan Hartman, Franklin Lewis, Brad Snyder, Dennis Dunderdale, Garrett Larson, Jonathan Franson, 86 DM Dennis, who's in the chat, the Wyoming Ham, I saw him earlier too, Randall Hinsley, Dennis Mickelson, George Gaini, Andy, Kenny Miyamoto, Ron Thorson, Ken Hall, Sean Bales, Ur Dragetchevic, Chad, Rob Zares, Devin B. Hedge, Mark Chase, Raymond Cracker, Geraldo Kelso, uh, Rob K8BCR, Lee Harrell, Michael Kearney, Steve Barker, Mark Fields, Corey Sheldon, Brad Nadau, Stephen Hunt, Conald Carroll, Mike Marusin, Mike Hearley, Harald Carpenter, and the Brew Crew. I did finish my beer. Thank you very much. And a little bit more, Stephen Hunter, Justin Rao, Justin Carduz, Brian Fairbanks, Richard Smith, Hercules KC1LZR, Mike Zarrett John Flowers, Stephen Blandford, Tom Wright, The Tan Hat, Bill McCarty, Good Game Bees, who I also saw in the chat, uh, David Gerald, Simon Deards, Michael Dubay, Michael Ifreto, and Don Riley. Everybody, uh, we're going to be going over to the Discord for the after chat. So if you have uh, questions that you didn't want to call in and you just want to be in the major phone pool that we're going to have on Discord, the link is in the description. Um, send Post your comments below if you're watching this after the fact. Um, and send me some messages. Hit me up on Facebook or whatever on what you think as well. And, and we can also send some emails to Becky. All right, guys. I am Josh, KI6NAZ. Thank you so much for joining us on this Friday. And I'll talk to you later.